it is really a trip how we have within a hundred meters or even less millions of years old cave with evidence of you know ancient hippopotamus and deers and various animals and then Roman villa 300 year old watchtower and then World War II pillbox bunker Hi there, good morning. Welcome to Malta. I am not sure what the name of this town is. I ended up here only because of the accommodation that I showed at the beginning there, which is just two blocks down that way, in the uh, middle of the island, sort of, in the middle of nowhere. But I wanted to start here just to give you an idea of basically a typical Maltese town because many of them, most of them that I have seen are like this. All of this incredible stonework. We have a year there, 1919, also same up there. Not sure about this church, but uh, really phenomenal architecture in just a regular small town of Malta. So that kind of captures what it's about here. Just spectacular stonework steeped in the history and culture of this island archipelago nation in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea between Italy, Europe, and Libya, Africa, Sicily, the island of Italy is about a two-hour ferry ride away. So I'm going to uh, start walking in the direction of my accommodation and my rental car. I just checked out of the room there. I did not have that whole, like, house. I just had the room and then it was shared bathroom and kitchen and living space there. So I wanted to sort of amend something that I said in one of my videos in Malta a few days ago that I thought that Malta was moderately priced. But after having uh, spent the last uh, few days here, I have to say it's actually pretty expensive. The price for that room there, when you consider a teeny tiny little room with bathroom outside the hall for that price is a little expensive especially we are nowhere near the beach i mean it's only 10 minutes away driving but uh you know it's not like it's a beach front hotel or in the main tourist areas this is not a tourist town this is just a regular town and so the prices of accommodation food the rental car is reasonable it is 45 euros or 50 dollars per day but Overall, I would say that uh, Malta is definitely, you know, in the more expensive range of countries to travel to. For example, relative to where I'm going today, flight this afternoon to Athens. 
finally going back to Greece. Flying into Athens and then most likely we'll head out to the islands after a day or two from there. But it has been an absolutely incredible, eye-opening, mind-blowing, in the true sense of the word, past several days here in Malta. It was a quick trip, just uh, five nights that I stayed here, but I've definitely packed it in with the exploring, making use of the rental car, and seeing all kinds of just amazing places and buildings, you know, these incredible churches that are all over the place, but then the ancient ruins that I have shown in previous videos going back 5,000 years, 6,000 years, and then the various other phases of history. So that will be part of the plan for today as well, is to see a few more of these ancient ruins. So uh, here we go, one day in Malta, once again, the last day, but it's gonna be a fun one. So that is the church that you could see from the balcony of my room. There is a, well, first of all, there's the airport right there, which I will be back to later this afternoon, but there's also a main road, and yet Google Maps is directing me down another one of these crazy little tiny lanes but at least I get a uh, close-up view of this church, which I actually wanted to do. But, uh, oh man, am I supposed to go that way? Ay, 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 ay. Well, it's off to a, a little bit of an adventurous start, I guess. So there you go, another uh, Fairly humble for Malta, but uh, still nice church with the classic limestone blocks. Oh man, why is Google telling me to go here when there is a major road? Ay, 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 ay. Well, it'll be a uh, fun little excursion through the fields, along the rock wall, seeing more old buildings, as long as I can actually fit through this. And I have now arrived at Gar Dalam Cave. So this is a very, very old cave. Its span is now estimated to be over two million years, but is increasing in duration as man's ancestry is pushed backwards in time. In the Maltese islands, the oldest Pleistocene organic remains are over 150,000 years old, while the earliest confirmed traces of human presence go back to the Neolithic 7,500 years ago. The old road to Berjabuga. Up to a few decades ago, the people of Berjabuga used a small country road to visit surrounding villages. When the path linking the museum to the cave was constructed, it had to cross this road. Therefore, two gates had to be installed to stop the locals from entering the museum or going down to the cave. So I guess this is the old road. That's really cool. So there is all kinds of information in uh, the signs here 
basically the history is just astounding many many different phases of human settlement on this little island and straight across speaking of phases of history that looks exactly like what I saw elsewhere which I guess is a World War II bunker that was my guess at the time as you can see totally different from the little tower just below it but that one with the little slits in the top it looks more recent and then here we have the Roman villa the remains are of a relatively large Roman villa of a type known as Villa Agraria. It had a number of rooms built around a central courtyard known as a peristyle. So, yet another phase of history, the Roman era. Okay. Yep, Second World War. It's nice to have confirmation on this one. This pillbox formed part of the fortification system during the Second World War. It was built in reinforced concrete in 1939-40. to 40. The purpose of these defenses was to engage with the enemy should an invasion take place. It was armed with machine guns and normally manned by six soldiers and a non-commissioned officer. Okay, and here is the Gardalum Cave. Up to 1912, the cave was used as a cattle, sheep, and goat pen. All right, so here we go. Cooling down already. In Gardalum, we find a large number of graffiti along the walls. Some date back to the early 20th century and commemorate the beginning or end of an excavation. Okay, so the graffiti is modern era. And then here you go with the old stuff, hippopotamus layer. Infiltration with lime has turned this highly fossiliferous deposit into a very hard bone, breccia, bone-free clay layer. So this cave really documents literally millions of years of history. Deer layer. And then you have some stalactites holding tight to the ceiling. And stalagmite, I realize you can't see very well, but it is wet, being formed as we speak. And it is now basically getting too dark to uh, see anything. I think we are close to the end, so uh, it's a short tour, yeah. You can't see, but this is the end of the railing. And there are rocks and holes in the ground. So uh, there you go. Another phase of Malta's history. More than just a phase. The tower. This small tower is one of several examples of vernacular fortifications around the Maltese islands. It was probably built around 1700 and was intended as a watchtower to guard over the surrounding fields. Okay. It is really a trip how we have within a hundred meters or even less millions of years old cave with evidence of you know ancient hippopotamus and deers and various animals and then Roman villa and then 300 year old watchtower and then World War II Pillbox bunker all right in this tiny little 
space right here and certainly more as well like what is the age of that wall more stone buildings out there and up on the hill so yeah the history here is just insane and then there you go the ugly modern era and so this is absolutely incredible i guess these are all the bones found in the cave <laughs> So you're not talking about just a couple little pieces of evidence, but tons and tons of bones. That is just the beginning. Okay. What is this? Skeleton of a brown bear. Ooh, what the heck is this? Awesome. A young elephant. So the elephant is the origins of the, uh, what do you call it? The one-eyed monster in Greek mythology. Because their eye sockets are joined, so it's only one hole there. So they thought that this was a one-eyed animal. Cyclops, right? And then, what is this? Young hippopotamus and an adult hippopotamus. Okay, it says modern. So I'm not certain that all of these bones came out of that cave. Maybe they came from elsewhere on the island as well. I'm not sure about that. Let me uh, ask. So, the answer is yes, all of this came out of this cave, and he said that this is only about 1%. All of this is only about 1% of the skeletons, bones, that they found in the cave. And others have been sent to other museums, and I think that some of them are sold, or some were even lost, etc. But, uh, wow, that is... Such a gold mine of ancient, ancient history. And I guess this is one of the deer. Servus Elathus Lin, skeleton of a red deer. Red fox. Wolf. Wow. So speaking of bad traffic, that is quite a spectacle. Moving a massive boat through these little towns, crazy. So this is Berzabuga. The town that was mentioned as being where the road went from here to the uh, site by the cave there. wanted to show a typical seaside town and also there are more of the ancient ruins that were included in the ticket price it was 650 euros or about seven dollars there to uh, go into the cave and then included is uh, this other site that is right up ahead oh there goes the boat Now, unfortunately, I am quickly running out of time. Wow, what is that monumental building up there? Some kind of a palace or a castle? I basically need to return the rental car in about an hour and 15 minutes. And it's going to be like a 30 minute drive back to Valletta. So anyways, this... Uh, tour might not include all that I wanted it to, but uh, still quite interesting. So, 
The other ancient site is right over here. Borg in Nadur, prehistoric temple. This megalithic temple dates back to Tarshian phase of the Neolithic period, so there are Tarshian temples that I'm planning to visit next, around 3100 to 2500 BC. It is formed up of four apses in similarity with contemporary temples like Imnajdra, which I also went to. In contrast, however, this temple includes a long boundary wall. During the Bronze Age, the temple was used as a cemetery. It was discovered in the late 19th century and excavated for the first time in 1922. Okay. So you have to get your ticket at Gardalam. Hello. Thank you. Thank you very much. Temple of Hercules. Whoa. I mean, that is Greek. But this predates the classical era of Greece by thousands of years. So, uh, some sort of ancient pre-Greek civilization with some similarities, I guess. So this is it, a small site, but uh, more just mind-blowing history of Malta. A fragment of pottery found here was thought to be Mycenaean. Scientific analysis has shown that it is made from local clay. This gives us an idea of what was influencing the Bronze Age inhabitants stylistically and maybe even culturally. This village with its unique impressive wall was well defended by the oldest fortification on the Maltese islands. While being in an easily defensible position, it still retained access to the sheltered harbor. Okay, let's go check out the Tarsian temples next, which was the same era. So I came across a parking space and took it while I had the chance. So I'm basically in a town that is kind of on the outskirts of Valletta and the surrounding towns around Valletta, the capital of Malta. Primavera. And so the Tarsian temples are right in this town, just two minutes walk away. So you can see, Tarsian Dispensary, I guess that is the name of the neighborhood or something. There you go, sign up there. Neither of those are the Maltese flags. None of those three are the Maltese flags. Interesting. Here we have a uh, little fruit stand. And that also is not the Maltese flag, so I'm not sure what all these different flags are, but uh, they're quite unique. A lamb with a sword. Hal Tarshian Prehistoric Temples Museum Department. Hello. Tickets here for Tarsian. Six euros entry fee here. The equipment in front of you is a weather station. Okay. I guess it means that right there. And then a similar tent structure as some other temples that I saw on Malta. 
And again, quite uh, remarkable. In the late Neolithic, four temples were built at Tarshien over a span of over 1,000 years, 3600 to 2500 BC, starting with the modest structure to the east and ending with the large six-room central temple, which connects the three larger structures into one large complex. Look at how massive these blocks are. This is absolutely remarkable. I think they might be bigger and more impressive blocks in the other place and kind of squarer blocks. Wow. In front of you are the remains of the earliest of the Tarshian buildings, built between 3600 and 3000 BC, built of smaller stones on the highest point of the site. This temple suffered greatly during the years when this was a field being plowed for farming. Here we are coming into the general Valletta area, so the actual capital of Valletta, which I made another video showing a tour of, is only 6,000 people, but that is just a small little area and it is surrounded by city everywhere. So the island of Malta is roughly the same size as the Greek island of Kos. The population of the Greek island of Kos is 33,000. Malta 
is 520,000. Almost half a million more people, or like 15 times, packed in the same area. So it is just very densely populated, the fifth most densely populated country in the world. So I'm back in St. Julian next to Slima near Valletta. We turned the car, all good there, right on time. Only thing is, now I need to catch a taxi. Hoping that there's one available soon. I don't want to take a chance with the bus and how many stops it's going to take. Hey, hey, hey what a hectic day. Ooh, brilliant. Hello, airports. What are you going to? Airports. Okay. Okay. Made it. That was an intense day there. Here we are at the Malta International Airport. So the brown bag is the leftovers from my Mediterranean platter lunch that I bought yesterday. So uh, that will be lunch again today. So that is going to do it for Malta. This was an absolutely incredible epic trip. I saw so much and yet there is so much more to see. I will be back for sure. But for now, next stop, Athens, Greece. See ya.